So we're continuing with lesson 5 of the step-by-step -step tutorial for building the demo mobile application and we're going to discuss now how to uh, write the code so that when the user clicks the submit button the uh, changes that are submitted to the server get uh, saved to the database. So when the user clicks the uh, submit button a server-side event fires. So let's go now and take a look at the server-side events. So click on server side in the events category in the toolbox on the left hand side and you can see the list of server side events are shown over here. Previously we defined an event handler for the on dialog initialize event that loaded the primary keys uh, for the customer table. But now we'd like to define an event handler for the after dialog validate event handler. So if we just quickly uh, walk through some of these um, server side events, the on dialog initialize event fires when the UX component is um, initially loaded. The on dialog execute event fires every time an AJAX callback uh, to this uh, component um, uh, is is fired and uh, we don't really need to worry about that for the time being. The dialog validate event uh, fires when the user clicks the submit button and data is uh, uh, submitted to the server and this is where you can define um, rules that determine whether the data is valid or not and then after the data has been determined to be valid then the after dialog validate event fires. So this is the event where we would like to put the code that's going to actually save the uh, submitted uh, changes to the server uh, because this event is only going to fire after all validation has been successfully passed. So in order to um, uh, specify the code for this event handler we can either uh, go here to this xbasic function and write in our own code or just as we did for the on dialog initialize event we can use action scripting to write the code for us. So let's just make sure that we've got our insertion point anywhere in some white space uh, in this function over here and now click on action scripting and the list of available actions is shown and we'd like to choose this first action that says save submitted data to tables so we'll go ahead here and we'll choose the default name. We can type in any name that we want. The name is actually irrelevant. It just needs to be unique. So we'll just accept the um, suggested name. And then a genie comes up that allows us to um, set options for this uh, save action. So what we'd like to do is make sure that after the data is submitted, we can continue to make further edits to the record that was just edited. So we'll go and change this after submit action from its default value of redirect to another page to edit record just submitted. And then we're going to turn on display debugging information just um, so that we learn how to actually use the de debugging information. Later on we'll turn this off because in a real application you wouldn't want that um, turned on. And then finally what we're going to do here is configure this refresh list control option. So what we want to do is make sure that after the user has made an edit to some of the data that any edits that were made are immediately reflected in the list control that we're using as our record navigator. So let's check the box here to refresh list controls and then click on the smart field now to select which list control needs to be updated. So in this case there is only one list control called uh, list1. So we'll go ahead now and uh, select that and uh, now at this point we've uh, configured everything that we need to do um, to save the record. So let's pause now and pick this up in the next video.